Artist Jeff Braun next on City Corner. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome to City Corner. Today I'm joined by artist Jeff Braun and we're going to talk about a new exhibit that he has going on display uh, pretty soon. Actually, pretty soon. Friday. Friday. This yeah. Friday? Mm -hmm. This yeah. Friday. And then it's going to be July running. July 11th. It's going to run through the month. Yeah. Uh, the month. Most of the month. So let's talk yeah. about it. I mean, we've got we've got some of your artwork here in studio, which we I do. look forward to getting into. But this one's interesting because it's called Easy to Look at, Hard to Kill. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that name. How did how did you come about that? Um, well, yeah, they left it to me to name the show. Okay. Uh, so, um, you know, they usually have boastful names. Um, you know, duality of man. Mm -hmm. You know, things like that. Really lofty, and that's not me. You know, I don't like to be pretentious. So, uh, you know, if you think you can go two ways, you can go self-deprecating, <laughs> which is my normal way to go, and call it something sort of self-deprecating. Or I thought, you know, what would be interesting would be to go the other way and be really boastful, say something ridiculously boastful, like, you know, easy to look at, which I don't feel easy to look at, you know, but hard to kill. I don't know. It had a, <laughs> it had a nice ring to it, and, and I thought it was a play on the, on the boastful, you know. Does humor actually play a big part in a lot of the work that you do? It does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which doesn't uh, go over well with everybody all yeah. the time. It's a little bit like comedies, and they don't get Oscars. <laughs> um, people don't always like comedy in their art. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've got some funny pieces. I've got some, you know, hopefully beautiful pieces. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, you know, whatever is entertaining. Yeah, I want to. Yeah. I want to I be entertaining. Sure, because most people a lot of times think art has to be very serious. And yeah. so you're right. It's if you come across something like in this case where it says Pink Teddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's Teddy Roosevelt, but he's pink. But then right. Pink Teddy in the name. You know, I mean, there's humor there. And so yeah. I mean, that's interesting how people respond sometimes to. <laughs> So art that has humor in it versus art that really right. is serious because it makes us think about something in a different way. Right, yeah. They, um, a, a lot of academics want it to be very serious. Uh, they want there to be layers of meaning. And sometimes there are, sometimes there are even something like Teddy, um, you know, there's a play on the name, but, and there's a play on his, his typical masculinity. Um, but, but, you know, there is a, something a little deeper there. I like mm -hmm. that, you know, Real men can wear pink, and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a little bit of a a little bit of a study on somebody like Teddy Roosevelt, who, sure. you know, he, he delivered a speech with a bullet in him. You know, he got <laughs> shot and he fin finished the speech, but uh, he also protected our parks and loved nature and had the soft side to him. And you know, so mm -hmm. there's a little. I'm exploring a little. You know, sometimes, but sometimes it's just sometimes it's just something that occurs to me that's funny. Okay, well, let's talk about, I, we've got images of some of the works that are going to be in the exhibit coming okay. up. So I thought we could maybe walk through those and go through, and you could explain a bit more about the process of creating them and the medium. So let's take a look at the first one. We actually have this one also okay. in studio. What's, what's the name of this one? Uh, I wish I remembered. Um, titling, <laughs> titling is the last thing I do. I think really? I called that um, tenuous at best, I okay. think is what I called that one. And so um, this is actually done on, I'm looking at it even here in studio, on, on wood? Yeah, found wood. Uh, that, that plays a big part of my art. I like to use found objects uh, if I can. Found wood, reclaimed wood, uh, mm -hmm. if possible. Mm -hmm. You don't always find beautiful pieces of wood. I was going to say, because these are actually quite smooth. That one's a nice one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I sand them down and, and doctor them up a little bit, but... Um, Sometimes you just have to go to Home Depot and get a piece of wood and, and beat the hell out <laughs> of it to, to get what you want. Bit. Yeah, it's not reclaimed yeah. Missouri far barnyard, uh, barn or farmhouse wood or anything exactly, like that. Exactly. Is is the young woman in the painting? Is that anybody in your your family or? She's not exactly no. Um, the hair is my oldest daughter Riley. Riley Danger, Danger is her middle name. I actually named her. <laughs> gave her the middle name Danger. Did you? Yeah, I did. The Which, humor again. Yeah. Oh, well, you're an artist. And Riley Danger, I thought it sounded <laughs> cool. And it's a middle name. If she didn't like it, she didn't have to use it. So the um, hair is inspired by but her? But she has really curly hair, yeah. Okay. And I, I started uh, painting uh, women when I started. Actually, I never painted really a girl before. 
um, unless I was doing a commission, um, but not for fun, not for my own, you know, my own artistic vision until I had a daughter. And then I saw her on Art Hill one time and she had this flowing hair. She was sitting on the hill and it, it really moved me yeah. just how beautiful she was and how sure. beautiful her hair was. And so I started painting her hair and then uh, I got, I really liked it. I thought, wow, curly hair like that is just really fascinating mm -hmm. to paint, just the way, you know, it has a life of its own and it gives a painting motion. Mm -hmm. It feels a little more alive than just static, close sure. hair. So, um, so every painting uh, that has moving curly hair is really, is really right. Well, let's talk about that because there's another image too. I noticed that in some of your work. I'm not sure which one we have coming up, but yeah, here we go again mm. with uh, the, f the flowing hair. So again, is yeah. this similar? That's actually my daughter Quinlan a little bit. Okay. Um, she, she models for me. Ry Riley used to model for me. Now she's 14 and doesn't like to sit still for me as much. I mm -hmm. can get Quinn to sit still for hours. Mm -hmm. She just likes to, she likes to do it. She likes to see herself. So that's her, that's Riley's curls and Quinlan's pose. I see. Yeah. All Although right, it's take... not really her face, but you know, that's the, I needed her looking over her shoulder a little bit. So you go from inspiration from your daughters to then inspiration from a Wes Anderson film? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it on the monitor here. It's a little different now. It's a little, uh, I've changed, I change things uh, minute by minute, but. Oh, really? But, but yeah, the. That's the Bill wheel, Murray? That's Bill Murray, yeah, of course. And the, um, the wheel spins, uh, you know, it's, it's got a, a piece on it now, so it makes that satisfying clack, clack, clack when you spin it. And it's got some, if you remember the movie, it's got jaguar sharks in it. And uh -huh. um, uh, there's jaguar sharks on the wheel now. But yeah, I wanted, um, I just always wanted to paint Bill Murray. And I actually wanted to do a show called 500 Murrays or Less. <laughs> I almost went that way and tried to get the gallery to let me do it to where I just did nothing but Bill Murray. So uh -huh. I had, obviously I couldn't come up with 500. That's why the or less, I figured maybe, I I'd, maybe I'd be able to come up with 30. Uh -huh. But I would do it in all different styles. And, and so I couldn't shake the Bill Murray thing. So I was like, I got to do Bill Murray. So I did. And he's big. He's three feet high, really? two feet wide. Um, and this is uh, on canvas. Is this just paint, or is it some of that it? Almost wood. has a watercolor. Is yeah. this on wood? Yeah, yeah, that's wood. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a. I, I use it really thinly, like watercolor, okay. a lot of times. Uh -huh. So, um, but yeah, he's uh, he's on wood. Yeah, thick, yeah. heavy. On wood. another piece of wood. Yeah. All right. Well, let's look. At, we've got a couple more minutes before we're going to take a break. But I do want to look. This is the pink teddy that we were talking about, and the one pink that's teddy. also. That's my wife's favorite. She's she's hoping that doesn't sell this weekend because she wants to take. <laughs> she wants. She wants the pink teddy. She wants to keep it. Yeah. You might have to buy that one as a gift. Yeah. Or, no, I love it. I think it's great, pink teddy. He makes me it's... happy. He's got that big, toothy, mm -hmm. you know, Teddy Roosevelt grin. And is this another one that's inspired by one of your daughters? It's got the curls, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then we've got the, uh, that hand is, uh, <laughs> the top hand by her mouth is Quinlan's hand. I um, see. But yeah, I had, uh, for some reason, that piece of wood called out for sort of an Irish looking girl. So to yeah, me that's- the green that's I Ireland. think as well too. Yeah. And yeah, again, it, it was reclaimed wood, really heavy stuff. And that's one of my jar girls that's up there now. <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I suppose you could make a lot out of uh, what I'd be trying to say there with the, with the you know, a woman in a jar, a woman under observation. Huh. Uh, it looks kind of clinical. I wasn't really going there. Um, but I'm, I'm fine with it if somebody wants to interpret it that way. But yeah. I did a series of those. There's another one. Um, I did a series of those and I just, I don't know, I don't know what, what you know, why it occurred to me. I just, I, I, I wanted to paint a jar basically. And I had a piece of wood that was almost jar shaped to begin with the first uh -huh. one. And I thought, well, what am I going to put in it? And you know, I paint a lot of women. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so I, and I thought, well, it'd be interesting what, you know, the different women in different, uh, with different emotions, different yeah. faces on. So maybe they're having a different reaction to, mm -hmm. to their own personal jar. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but I do, when we want to com come back, when we do come back, I want to talk about how you got into art and, again, the media that you use. Not, mm -hmm. I didn't realize before we started this that most of them are all on, on, on wood, so yeah. I want to talk a bit more about that. Mm -hmm. So, again, we're going to take a quick break, but please stay with us right here on City Corner. We'll have more with Jeff Braun when we return.
The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome back to City Corner. Today I'm talking to artist Jeff Braun about his work as well as an upcoming exhibit at Soha Gallery. I want to ask you, have you showed work before at Soha Gallery? I've done a few group shows. They do a holiday show mm -hmm. every year and uh, Julie Malone, um, Kat Dunn and Scott Tagliata, the three of them run the, run the place. They've been nice enough to ask me a couple years to do that. Um, they had a third, third year anniversary show okay. uh, a month, month or so and I put a piece in there. So I've got a little bit of a history with the gallery. That's good, that's yeah. good. Well, we were in the first segment looking at some of the pieces that are gonna be there. We have a couple more uh, to go and I thought we'd pull up those images again and you can tell us a bit more about this. Now, yeah. are the images that all the ones that we've seen, are these just a sample of what's gonna be there? Is there more or is this kind of it? We've looked at about... Yeah, no, there's a lot. There's a lot, uh, okay. Quite a few pieces, yeah. Um, okay. I try to have some, I, you know, I like, uh, I like to have different paintings, different sizes, different price ranges. I want, I I want to have some accessible to, mm -hmm. um, you know, college kids mm -hmm. or people who just don't have a lot of money, but they want to have a little piece of sure. art or a sure. print or something. Like this, like this one. I mean, is this, it's interesting because when I, we were saying that, you know, sometimes you can't, when you look at an image or a photo of your work, you can't tell the size of it. Is this something that's actually quite big, what it's we're huge. looking at? This, yeah. that's, a, that's my biggest, heaviest piece. Uh, it's four feet by four feet, mm. and it's about three inches deep. It's on... It's on birch, and birch is heavy, so I framed it heavy. <laughs> I'm going to take it to Julie after af after we get done taping this, and she's going <laughs> to love me for having to have So I assume this is one of your pounds. more expensive pieces. It's going to be, yeah, it'll mm -hmm. be a little pricier, but still reasonable. Soha's a really reasonable gallery. Uh, they're, they're not going to price anything too terribly mm -hmm. high. It's not as price, as high as you're going to see in a, in a place like Clayton. I see. It's I a see. really, it's, it's, the, it's meant to be accessible. Yeah, it's an accessible. Uh, and this is one gallery. that we actually have both, uh, we're looking at on the screen, and we also have the real piece right here next to us in studio. Yeah. But I said, I asked you when you first got here to, this, to the set, if this was you. <laughs> yeah. <it's laughs> but it's not. If my beard really came in in a way that it can't, <laughs> that would be me. Yeah. In my in my uh, wolf hat. No, that's Max from Where the Wild Things Are, all all grown up. And uh, the title of that one is Where the Wild Things Used to Be. I see. And my idea was that's that's my midlife crisis uh, painting. So that so uh, Max goes back. I actually wrote a story that goes with it too. So I'll give an artist's uh, talk in a couple weeks, July twenty third, and I'll read the story there probably. I see. But it's. Um, yeah, I mean, he goes back. He, it's you know, he misses the wild, uh, the wild thing days of his of his youth, and he goes back. And sadly, you know, it's barren. There's yes. No, there's no more wild rumpus to be had. So mm -hmm. it makes my wife sad. She this one, she likes it, but it it makes her sad. Do so you think when people <laughs> who purchase art, well, I mean, when, as an art as an artist and you're creating art, and you know, you're going to sell it in this case. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you thinking about the buyer? Are you thinking about who could potentially? Be interested in this piece or are you just yeah. doing it because it's how you feel and it's an idea that you have you, you 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 have to do both i guess i try not to i try to um i used to always chase a dollar you know when my when <laughs> when i first got into it you tried to figure out what people wanted to buy and then they would never buy what you mm. thought they wanted to buy you know you'd think well this is a seller this is the thing this is accessible uh color schemes, whatever, and it, it never went that way. It always went, the piece that went is always the piece that you really liked doing. Interesting. That the more fun you have doing it, that's the one they respond to. They, they, there's some kind of a, you know, I don't want to get hippie about it, but yeah. there's some kind of a psychic uh, sure. thing I, going on there where they know that you yeah. enjoy doing it, that you're connected to it. Absolutely. So you try not to do it, but then you still, you know, you still, you're like, oh, you know, I'm like, well, is anybody going to like Max besides mm -hmm. me? You know, mm -hmm. He's, but, uh, you know, hopefully they'll respond to it. And uh, eventually, you may hold on to these pieces, the stranger ones, for, for a little longer mm -hmm. than someone like, like the girl painting. But 
eventually when you have that buyer, it's going to be somebody who really, really connects sure. with it. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why you do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an act of, you know, it's an it's a relationship. So it is. It's, it's really interesting. Of, it's an act of love almost where they, yeah. they love it and they, you know, they, re they want it enough to buy it and put it in their house. Mm -hmm. and, and it is really interesting how art speaks to you in that way and you feel a connection to it so much that you have to own it. You have to have it. You know, and that's and what you want. Yeah. yeah. How that happens. So I was on your, I'm going to switch gears for a second. I was on your website and I thought, is this the truth? I'm going to read this, the quote you said, I was born with a full set of teeth in a motel room outside of St. Paul. After that, things got weird. And I thought, is that yeah. true? Yeah, that's pretty true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My feeling about that, uh, uh, they ask you to like, write a lot of biographies, artists, statements, things like that when you uh -huh. do these shows. And um, no, my, nobody really wants to hear about me. They don't want to know um, where well, we I went to school. We want to know when you got into art. And, a little you know. bit, maybe. And if you're interested in it yourself or you're interested in the art, maybe you want to know a little bit. But, you know, uh, what my dad did for a living, things like that aren't mm -hmm. really, you know. But, but uh, tell them a good story, I say. I That's see. Everybody wants a good story. And um, I think of myself as a storyteller. I write. I, my paintings are stories. Um, they used to call me a liar when I was a kid, but now I'm a storyteller because you get old enough, you can, you can sort of relabel yourself. But it's the same thing. You just tell sure. lies all the well, time. Well, we've, we've got some images again of some of your past work. And as I talk to you, I just want to throw those up on screen. We don't necessarily have to walk through them. But as we look at them, I wanted to ask you, I mean, how long have you, have you been creating, professionally creating uh, work? Professionally about, uh, I think about 15 years. Um, probably really uh, 13 or 14 years. I, it started when I had little, uh, had, had my first daughter, Riley. Um, I wanted to stay home with her. I was doing the cubicle job and mm. doing this a little bit on the side. And I decided it was, um, you know, I wanted to stay home with her. And so I did murals for a while, things like that, okay. uh, commission work. Um, and then that just sort of took off to um, art fairs and things like that, started, um, you know, started to make, you know, before that you sell it to friends or an occasional restaurant or a cafe or something like that. But then really turn it in into galleries and art fairs came when, when I had little, little daughters running around. And, and, then and it, you could get involved with them and then that was an activity you could do together, so. And then as we talked about it, you know, looking at these, you're kind of, I, I do see the flowing hair mm -hmm, a yeah. lot. I mean, is it, you know, in a city like St. Louis when you, except for that one. Yeah, that's Tobias <laughs> from, uh, uh, I'm blanking on the show, Arrested Development. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, did, okay. I don't know if you saw that, but he, we were watching a lot of Arrested Development as a family because of Netflix, you, you gorge yourself on them. Uh -huh. and so Tobias just worked his way into my consciousness, and, uh, but I did want to do a straight picture of him. Sure. So, and is that on, I mean, it looks like it's on brick, but it's actually painted. It's painted, brick. right, to, to look like that. Yeah, but yeah, Tobias makes me laugh. And that is a picture, that's an illustration from a book I've been writing. Um, Squid Boy. Okay. And he's the evil doctor character. And I was wondering because I think the next photo after this is actually not this oh, there's one. There's two-headed boy. He's another character from from the book, but I uh, he's actually the the first before Squid Boy. There was two-headed boy. I used to paint uh -huh. this character over and over again because he was he was <laughs> a fan favorite. People wanted to see two-headed boy. That's just a, that's a tiny little, uh, that's, that would be an example of one of my more accessible pieces, sure. something like that I might sell for, you know, 30 bucks or something, okay. something that people could take home. But still, no, it's nice, well, I was going to say the squid is coming up, but. Oh, that's a different one, that's not squid boy, but that's my, um, that's my octopus. Oh, okay. Uh, I actually thought it was a squid, somebody corrected me and said, no, it's an octopus, and I had squid in the title, I had to change it, but I call that piece mine, with an exclamation point, mine because he's claiming the arch. You know, he's giving it a big hug in my... He's claiming the Mississippi. Yeah. There actually might be an octopus in the Mississippi. There may be. I was going to ask you before, um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, you know, as you talked about becoming a professional artist here mm -hmm. and after you and your wife had your family, and it's like, do you, do you develop a signature look? I mean, do people come to know you for the girls with the flowing hair? They and kind this? of do, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I, I actually should, you know, the 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 art professors and agents and th they'll tell you you should develop a look. Uh, you should or you should? should. I, you should have a look mm -hmm. so that people know that's you. Mm -hmm. You can develop a following and that's your thing. And mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not really good at that because I just want to do what makes me smile. I want to mm -hmm. do whatever entertains me, whatever. If something makes me laugh, I want to be able to, you know, to do sure. something like Pink Teddy if I want to. I don't want to always do the beautiful girls. It would, you'd get in a rut and then yeah. you're just, and then it's just a job and then you might as well be cutting lawns because it, 
pays better. So. Well, hold that thought because I do want to talk to you about what your who your influences are or what are your influences. So mm -hmm. again, we're going to take a quick break, but we're going to have more with artist Jeff Braun when we return. Lead paint poisoning affects 1 million children today. If you're pregnant or have young children and your home was built before 1978, you could be at risk. Learn how to protect your family. To find your home's danger zones, the health effects, or just to find help, log on to leadfreekids.org. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome back to City Corner. Today I'm talking with artist Jeff Braun. We've been discussing his upcoming exhibit at Soha Gallery, mm -hmm. but also talking about some of your past work. I want to ask you about influences, because a lot of times artists are just artists. They're born that way. Other yeah. times they're influenced by other artists or specific work. I mean, what's in your case, what, what's the influence or who's the influence, if there is one? Um, you know, really I'm more influenced by uh, writers and filmmakers mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, certainly uh, I've learned some tricks. I'm a self-taught artist, um, so an outsider artist, they would call me. Um, but, um, you know, like a Coen Brothers movie or like Wes Anderson inspired me to do that Bill Murray piece. And, mm -hmm. and so, but uh, technique wise, um, you know, there's some people, but like graffiti artists, outsider artists, Shepard Fairey, people like that, where I look at it and I'll say, well, you know, what, how did they do that? Um, but that's sort of technical, but mm -hmm. the inspirations come from anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a book, a movie, something sure. that makes me laugh, my kids, the hair, mm -hmm. you know, things do, like that. Do you feel that your work ever tells a story or do you feel, as we've kind of been discussing, that it's more of a meaning or a feeling that it's meant to convey? It both. Um, clearly, the Max is a story. Um, Pink Teddy became a, a sort of a pun joke that, mm -hmm. that got a little deeper and more fun for me. Sometimes it's uh, a color. I want to put these two colors together. I find a color in something, or I see a color next to another color in something, and I'm like, well, that's the beginning of that. I want to do that. Whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's going to look like that. And so sometimes it's just a pop of color, and I wrap it around a portrait of a girl or you know, maybe a, a a tree or something that, but I want it to have that. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's, and that that gets back to probably I shouldn't do that. I should probably mm -hmm. have a, a set um, look mm -hmm. and a, but and a process. But I that's no fun. It's interesting because I think people you sometimes expect similar to writers. You know, you want to know if they've been through something like horrible, and that's what oh they yeah, put horrible on the page. stuff. Let's get into that. <laughs> you know, or if they've yeah. just been through something and it's reflected in their artwork, or yeah. even maybe not something personal, but what's going on in the time. I mean, I think we strive, we look to art sometimes to be a reflection of these deeper things. But then mm -hmm. it sounds a little bit like you're also on the other end of the spectrum, which it just can be about the creative process and yeah. still making people think, but but fun. Yeah, it used to be really deep. You know, mm -hmm. I used to, I went to school to be uh, to be a writer, and creative writing was my was my major, and so I wrote really bad poetry. <laughs> you know, I wanted to be Jack Kerouac um, with less drugs, um, but not no drugs. But so you know, but no, I uh, I uh, wanted to be Kerouac, and so then when I became uh, became a painter. Uh, you know, I was still, uh, I carried that over. I wanted to be a, an important painter, a deep, I want to paint metaphors, and, mm. you know, and, and maybe um, abstracts that meant something that, you know, esoteric or 
and you know you get full of yourself when you're young. Um, and then I had kids, and then I started uh, having fun with things. But yeah. you know, they taught me to play again. You know, you, you get so self-important in college, and shortly after college, and then when you have kids, they remind you, you know, to have swing set races again. They right. remind you to do the ridiculous things, and you do it with art, and then you do it with art. And you're like, you know, this is fun. This is what I. This is what I should be doing. And you do it, and then people respond to it even. And so even, you know, it even makes sense, you know, commercially to, mm -hmm. to have fun with it, so. How would you, you know, with your show coming up, um, and I want to be sure before we end that we plug that again, but how would you describe the art scene here in St. Louis? I mean, as a working artist, is it is it vibrant? Is it healthy? Can you truly make a living doing this? It's tough, it's tough. Um, um, you know, I have to supplement it in a lot of different ways. Almost every artist I know has hmm. to supplement in some way. Um, some I know don't have kids, they don't have families, and they go from, you know, festival to fair to, you know, they're able to do it that way, sleeping in a truck, living on the road, I can't do that. Hmm. Um, there's a, there, you know, there's a few, I know I have a few friends who can do it full time, and that's, that's the goal. Um, but it's a great art scene as far as there's great artists in the city, there's lots of galleries, there's lots to do. I'd like to see more money, I'd like to see people support it a little more. Um, it's really big amongst people who like it but can't always buy it, mm -hmm. uh, which is great, you wanna share it, mm -hmm. but it'd be great if, if you know, they shared a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of the more money uh, would, would come through uh, mm -hmm. for, for more of us so that we could do what, what we so like So if one of the do, challenges so. is sort of, you know, not so much the accessibility, but people having the money to buy it, and just what mm -hmm. would you say is one of the, the positive aspects here? I mean, is it sort of the camaraderie of other artists, or how would you sort of describe the positive aspect of the art scene here? Yeah, I mean, you led the witness a little bit. The camaraderie is great, you know. I, I, I've made so many friends at the art fairs, and they're, they're just, uh, you know, they're, all, they're really good people. I don't find the um, pretentious people at the art fairs um, that's a little more academic. I do, I do know some uh, in the <laughs> academic world. They get a little uh, full of them. So I think you, you're in that environment. It, mm -hmm. you know, it fosters that. But down in the streets, the working artists uh, are really good people. Yeah. And I've met so many and made so many good friends that way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, thank you for being here. And we're going to, before we wrap Thanks things up, we're going to be sure to have that information for you on the screen. Jeff's upcoming exhibit is at Soha Gallery. It's July 11th through, 20, through the 23rd. Uh, the information's right there. And as he mentioned throughout the show that he's doing an artist talk and there's some other events around it. So please be sure to go to their website to check it out. And you can always buy artwork from Jeff outside of this. Always. Via his website. What so. is that website, Sarah? <laughs> JeffBron.com. With a W. <laughs> Ron with it. That's right. Ron with you. the W. Thank you so much. This has Thank been so you, much sir. fun. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And everything. And good luck. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much. And thank you at home for watching, uh, watching City Corner today. And please keep it right here on STL TV Experience St. Louis. <laughs>